and hello everyone welcome back to another nim tutorial so in this tutorial we'll be continuing with our string utils module that we are trying to explore so let's create a variable i'm going to call it b b will contain i am very cool it is interesting to see very high places from very far away. Now, one cool thing that we can use from string utils is the count function. B dot count very. So the amount of times very is used inside of the sentence. We'll count it. If we run it, we'll get four. So very is used four times. One, two, three, four inside of this sentence. You can also use count lines, so dot count lines, and it will count the amount of lines in here. Now there are three lines because we're using a backslash n. If we were to just echo out b here, then you'll notice why we get three. So here it's split into three line lines because we're using this backslash n, which means new line. And here it says three lines because it's split into three lines. You can also use delete. So b dot delete. And let's say three to 10. This will delete the items at index four up to nine, both included. So here, this is the first one you'll notice it's normal. And then you see I owl. So zero, one, two, and then three. So index three here will start and then the rest will be deleted or two and the rest will be deleted up until 10. So it basically deletes chunks out of your string. Let's create a variable called C, which is equal to a documentation string. So that means it's this string that has three double quotes. And this means you can split it into multiple lines. So you can say, hello world, this is intended. All right, so now if we were to echo C, you'll notice we get hello world, this is intended. You could also dedent it by going dedent and this will unindent all of the text. So now you'll get this. So dedented them all by one. Now let's say you want to indent instead of dedent. Then you can go indent, dedent, C by 10. Now if you take a look at this, it will indent everything by 10. Now if you didn't say C here, you'll get or didn't, then you'll get this. It will be much further. What we did first is we dedented it so there's a little less space here. So it's more predictable how far it will be indented. You can also count the amount of indentation used by going indentation C. Now if we count that, there's four. So this counts the amount of spaces used per indentation. So if we were to just print out C, you'll notice each indent is only, actually you can see it here. So there's only four spaces per indent. This was just indented twice, but there's four spaces for each indent. Cool. Let's create a new variable, call it D. And let's go like this. The names Jack pronounced Mac. I am slash was cool. And let's print out D just to see how it looks. My name's Jack. Pronounced Mac. I am slash was cool. Now we can escape all of these special characters such as these quotes, this backslash. Because here there's no problem, but there might come a case or scenario where you need to escape them. We can do that easily by saying D dot escape. And I will escape all of the special characters. Of course, using a backslash to escape them. Similarly, let's go let k is equal to d dot escape and then echo k dot 
on escape. So we just escaped D here. But we can also unescape it with unescape. So now we'll just get what we used to have without any escaping because we used to have this. As you can see, backslash and then double quotes. Here we don't have those backslashes. We only have what we need. So you can unescape it very easily. Cool. Let's create a variable E and E is equal to this binary value. Now we can echo from bin u int 8 and this u int 8 should be here e. This converts binary to an unsigned 8-bit integer. Meaning if we do this we'll get 153. So this binary becomes 153. Useful if you know binary. Now one awful thing is that when you have a large number, let's say, and if is like one like this, it's very difficult to read and know exactly what this is because the zeros, they confuse you. What you could do is say insert sep for insert separator and you specify F. Now if we run this, it will have a separator inserted to make it easier to read. So now it's easy to see, okay, thousand, million, billion, 10 billion. You can also specify what separator to use. So let's say sep is equal to, and then a dash. Take note that I'm using single quotes here to specify character. Now instead of underscores, it will use dash. And I can also specify the amount of digits it should include when separating. And let's say it should be two, then two digits each time instead of three. Cool. Let's go G. G is a number 2014. Now it's very simple to convert something like G to a string. It's just int to string G. So you simply convert it an integer to a string. It looks the same here, but this is in fact a string and not an integer. You can also specify the minimum amount of characters. So let's say six, if we run that, you'll get this. So now we'll add two zeros to the front of this value here. Another useful function you could have is, is alpha ASCII. And this will check if an item exists in the alphabet. So this is true. This will be false and this will be false. So only that A will return true because that's the only value that exists in the alphabet. You will also check is alphanumeric. And it's the same as what we just did, but now it also includes numbers. So it will be true, false, and true. But if you just want to check numbers, you can also check is digit. And this will only check for numbers. Now another useful function you can have is is empty or white space, which will check if a string is empty or if it contains just white space. So if we were to check these three, we'll get true, true and false because this is an empty string. So it will turn true. This string is just white space. So it will return true. And this string isn't empty and it isn't just white space. So it will return false. You can also easily check if something is uppercase or lowercase by going is lower ASCII and is upper ASCII. Now if we say C that will or V that will be true, capital V that will be true. So it will check specifically if a character, so single quotes, is uppercase or lowercase. As you can see, both of them return true because this is a lowercase V. If I were to change that uppercase and this one to lowercase, it will both be false. You can also use to lower ASCII and to upper ASCII. And I will convert these characters to uppercase or lowercase. And of course, it doesn't just need to be characters. You could specify strings. So I am uppercase. And if we run that, this lowercase v became uppercase and this uppercase text became lowercase. We can also check if a specific character is a space. For example, Let's take these two and say, is space ASCII? 
and here we could add a space and here we can actually add a backslash n because a backslash n still counts as a space. If you were to add a backslash backslash, that will not count it as a space, that will count as a backslash. So it will be true, true and false. Because both of these two counts as spaces and this does not count as a space. And that's where I'm going to leave it for now. We'll have a part three coming out very soon. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. And I will see you all again in the next NIM tutorial.